Okay. Well, hello, everyone. <laughs> First of all, we would like to thank for the opportunity to be here and present our paper, which is at the same time our very first project. So please have that in your mind and be understanding. <laughs> okay, so the title of our project is The Forgotten Heritage, Evangelical Cemeteries in Kramps Commune in the Light of Our Community Archaeology. So first, I will present a brief history of the evangelicals in Polish lands. But first, maybe let's speak about the evangelical church itself. So, evangelical church is part of a Christian religion. The main difference between evangelicals and Catholics is that they don't recognize the authority of the Pope. So basically, every church has its own rules and systems. The story of evangelicals in Polish lands dates back, dates back to half of the 16th century, so they appeared shortly after Luther's Reformation. Although it is the 19th century that has brought the significant amount of his believers to Poland. It was caused by colonizations conducted by the forces of the Polish kingdom. But what you need to remember is that the Polish lands in the early 19th century were under the partitions of Prussian government. The population of evangelicals on Polish lands was concentrated in few regions, in Greater Poland, uh, in Silesia, and in Pomerania. It was obviously connected with the fact that these parts of Poland were in a strict border with German Empire, which is homeland of the evangelicals. Uh, in the 20th century, the population of evangelicals in Polish lands amounted to approximately 1 million citizens. After the First World War, when Poland reclaimed its independence, many evangelicals left Polish lands. However, due to economic crisis caused by migrations of Germans to their homeland, the German government made it hard for some of their people to come back to the country and insisted on them to stay in Poland. Yet it is the Second World War that has brought the biggest changes in the situation. From 1945, the Polish government conducted deportations of the German minority. The number of forced refugees was estimated to around 500,000 in the first wave, and until the 1950s, the number increased to 3.5 million of the deputies. Many people that were deported, as well as those who had stayed in Poland, felt more connection to Polish culture and values. Some of them didn't even know that they had German roots. The ones that remained on Polish lands were mostly families with multi-generational history of living in Poland, or people from ethnically mixed marriages. Uh, as we will see later, it was a common thing in those times to get married to Polish family just to be able to stay in their homeland because they felt that it was their homeland as well. So now we'll move to the overall research idea area and plan. So uh, area of our research covered four cemeteries and now you're going to hear some funny Polish words. <laughs> so it was in a cemetery in Osowce, in Ponchów, in Nowyczarków and in Konstantinów. Um, and it all started in 2021 when the authorities of Kramsk Commune asked the archaeological faculty of Adam Mickiewicz University in Poznań to examine those cemeteries and then prepare an appropriate plan of preservation. And our research plan was to explore the sites using non-invasive methods such as magnetometry, total station measurements and GPS. And we are also planning to carry out an inventory of plant indicators in heavily overgrown parts of the cemeteries. And here on the map you can see the cemeteries marked. Okay, uh, okay, so moving on. Um, the first site uh, the, for our first destination was the cemetery in Konstantinov. It was located in the woods near the village on a small hill with a wooden cross in its central part. On this site we found three graves that were preserved well on the surface. Um, two of them were located directly next to each other, so yeah, you can see them here. And, and the third grave was found on the east from the cross, and it was a grave of a child, so it's this one on the left. Uh, and the rest of the graves were determined by uh, the plant indicators. And due to overall good state of preservation, we were able to create a plan of the cemetery using total station measurements. So the second site we decided to explore was the cemetery in Osowce. Uh, its location was very similar to the previous one I mentioned before, on a hill with a cross in the central part. Unfortunately, we couldn't find or identify any grave structures visible with eye only, so we had to support our research with magnetic survey. The next day, we moved our research 
to the cemetery in Novicharkov. There we discovered that all of its area was covered in thick lilac bushes, which we later found out that were traditionally planted on evangelical cemeteries. But because there wasn't anyone who could take proper care of them, they overgrown. On this site, we actually weren't able to conduct any type of studies, but we made photographic documentation of four graves with stone structures, which you can also see on the presentation. Uh, and the last stop was the cemetery in Pohuf. Uh, and, and as you can see on the pictures, this cemetery was also located on a hill, yet we didn't identify any crosses. The situation was the same in case of the graves. Part of the cemetery was, was overgrown, and the other part we and on the other part we carried out magnetic survey. <laughs> okay, and now let's uh, just a few words about the results of the non-invasive uh, research we made. So they were in actually very satisfying. <laughs> we conducted the magnetic survey on two of, of all four cemeteries and the images we received were um, actually a, a bit unclear and confusing because we couldn't identify any anomalies, as you can see here. But once, a, oh, so one successful thing was the that was the plan of the cemetery in Konstantinov. We could identify 18 graves. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, and due to the very poor preservation state of the graves within cemeteries and pretty scarce documentation in the archives, it has become necessary for us to obtain information from the local community. And I guess that's the part that interests everybody the most. <laughs> so for this reason, we conducted interviews with the inhabitants of Krams Commune, and they were not only meant to provide us answers to specific questions about the sites, but also to check the status of those cemeteries in the memory of community popula population living in their city. Yeah. And now we are moving to the, I don't know if I'm, yeah, you here. Okay, uh, if I uh, interview the local community, uh, so uh, in Konstantinov, uh, we have successful interview two villagers, head of the village, uh, Mrs. Grażyna Tengos, briefly told us about situation between German and Polish community before World War II in this region of Poland. Uh, she claimed that they live in friendly connotation. Uh, and the German people were really, really helpful for the locals. However, she also mentioned that there weren't any intermarriages. So relations were close, but there was clear dividing line between the nations. Uh, she told us that nowadays, Evangelical Cemetery in Konstantinov doesn't raise neither positive or negative interest. She also presented information about early archaeological research on the cemetery that we didn't know about. And this is one of the reasons why the survey, magnetometrical survey, Came out, out. Came, didn't work out for us uh, because the archaeological group called Pomost was looking for the mass grave of German soldiers and unfortunately, as a result, they destroyed part of the site. Uh, second conversation was had with Mrs. Uh, Helena Mikowajczyk, who is the only person remaining who truly cares about the state of cemetery in Konstantinov. Uh, and the reason for this uh, I had close relations with individual buried here, the buried there, sorry. Uh, and history starts before World War II, when her father was an employee of German family, Wenzlaf, who, who lived in Konstantinov. They were family consisting of father, mother, two daughters, and one son who was obligated to serve during war. Uh, when he went to the front line, he asked father of Mrs. Mikowajczyk to take care of his whole family and his request was fulfilled. Uh, Mr. Wenslav died in 1948 and his wife in 1955 and they were both buried in cemetery Konstantinov. And here on the picture we can see Mrs. Wenslav and for the Mrs. Mikowajczyk that told us the story, she he was called her nanny, so the grandmother. Uh, and they treated like part, and they treated her like part of the family. Uh, and uh, their daughters uh, left to Germany after war, but even they, they were in contact with Mikołajczyk family. And Mrs. Helena strongly emphasized to us that she would be really content if someone from authorities would look after graveyard. Nevertheless, she perceived that in current situation only she cares about graves. 
uh, I can observe absence of affection in local community. The youth is not interested about these stories and others don't feel bond with the one buried there, said Mrs. Mikowajczyk to us. She's probably the only confidant who still remembers about people of the past and their stories. She believes that bad blood between Polish and German nation after the war is at fault. For some time, there's a sense of national harm and that uh, that slowly disappeared during the time, but the memories of our German neighbors who lived next to each other just vanished as well. And here of the picture, you can also see the descendant of Mrs. and Mrs. Wenzlaff in Germany and the Wenzlaff sisters that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. And uh, second, uh, another village where we had a chance to speak with locals was Osovce. And first person we met there was a young man who lives really close to the graveyard. And he was aware of the cemetery and didn't mind that it lies so close to his home, but that at the same time, I'm so sorry, <laughs> but at the same time, he wasn't in any way interested about the site. Uh, he also didn't notice any interaction. He, no one visited graves, neither Polish nor German people, and nobody take care of the burial grounds and nobody visit it. A uh, second person we conducted interview with was head of Osofte, Mr. Mr. Żabierek, born in 1948. And his brother is the owner of the lands when the cemetery lies, and probably the only person who in some way took care of this place. Uh, Mr. Żabierek is the descendant of German family. Uh, his great-grandfather, Nering, was probably buried on Osofte Cemetery, and his great-grandmother, who died in 1957, was buried in Novocharkov. Their daughter, grandmother of Mr. Żabierek, Emilia Nering, was evangelist who married Polish man, Mr. Ruzicki. And this is the story that uh, Zana told you about, that the Polish, uh, that the German uh, women married Polish men to stay in their homeland because they feel like Poland is their homeland, not the German, because they live here like for generations. And here we can see the picture of uh, Mrs. Emilia Nering, then Ruzicki, and her husband. And, uh, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, she had, uh, Mrs. Emilia Nering has, no, sorry. Has <laughs> six or seven siblings. Two sisters live in Poland after the war. One of them also married Polish man, Mr. Mr. Michalak. Uh, other siblings left Poland and moved to Germany and USA after the war. And in 1980, uh, Mr. Żaberek visited part of the family who lives in Germany and found one of the sisters of his grandmother. And they kept in touch to the outbreak of COVID pandemic. And here we can see the. Uh, pictures of the from the meeting. From the meeting, yes. Uh, and the next place we visit uh, was at Novocharkov, and unfortunately, the cemetery was the most devastated of them all. And we also didn't meet anyone who could provide us with some valued information about the site. The interviews with local community in the village came out poorly, and we didn't have opportunity to meet the head of Novocharkov. The only interview which gave us some information was with Mrs. Sobchak. She confirmed that no one visited the site and nobody is taking care of, care of the graves anymore, and the place is just slowly degrading. Again, like many other interviewers, she told us about good relation between German and Polish neighbors. On the other hand, she emphasized that nobody is taking care about this graveyard because none of the descendants of evangelists lives in this village nowadays. And the last, play, the last interview took place in Ponkov. Mm, and from the villages, we got the information that in Stefanovo, the village next to Ponkov, lived family of Freulich, whose ancestors were buried on this cemetery. And Mrs. Amel Alicia Freulich uh, is the evangelist woman who still lives in Poland. And she told us the story about her and her late husband, Mr. Erwin Freulich. Uh, he had many siblings, but we only possessed information about four of them. Two of his sisters lived in Poland after the Second World War. Another sister, Erna, died young and was buried in Ponkov with her parents, uh, Mr. Henek, Ms. Mr. Henek Frolich and Mrs. Amelia Frolich. And the last one, brother of Mrs. Frolich, was an officer in my army, and there are possibilities that he was murdered in Katyn. And when 
Mr. Erwin Freilich still lived, he took great care of the site. But after he died in 2020, it became a burden for Mrs. Alicia and her daughter to take care of the graves of their ancestors. Because nobody else thought about the cemetery, no one from authorities and no one from the local community. That's why for Mrs. Alicia, it will be so important that someone got interested and would take care of these buried grounds. She also told us a story similar to the one from Konstantinov that before war, German and Polish people were in friendly relationships and no one did any harm to the graveyard. But unfortunately, the cemetery was devastated afterwards because of the resentment toward the German nation. And it's the same story as in the three other cases. Graveyard slowly has been breaking apart by the force of nature and only Freudish family maintained graves of their loved ones. And here also we can, uh, we did magnetic take a survey and here also we have the story why this magnetic survey came out poorly because here again Pomos group uh, was looking for another mass grave for German soldiers and they disturbed our magnetic survey because we didn't know about the fact like mm -hmm. yeah uh, and summing this up uh, the results help us to better understand the background history of cemeteries and their meaning for the local community. Only individuals who are directly connected with the deceased buried on these cemeteries took care of the site and showed interested, interest in keeping them in good state of repair. Those individual units are secret guardians of the forgotten heritage. It is to it is really important to acknowledge their efforts and allow them to cherish the memory of their loved ones. How can we do it as archaeologists? Well, in our opinion, uh, we need to listen to their stories with empathy and respect and suggest proper solutions for their needs. Um, another important factor is the contribution of the local authorities. In this case, our collaboration with authorities of Crafts Commune will result in the plan of preservation for the four cemeteries we have discussed. Our proposition is to establish the area of the cemeteries and build fences around them. The issue concerning excessive flora overgrowth should be solved by trimming the plants and setting the path to preserve graves. And the last thing will be placing information board next to the, next to the entrance to each cemetery. And we would like to end our presentation with the quote, we are all immortal as long as our story is told. Thank you all for having us. <laughs>